This is perfect, he thought. He looked around to make sure no one was watching. Satisfied that he was alone, Obioma started digging a hole under the tree. Once upon a time in Achina village, there lived a man named Obioma. He was known throughout the village as a hard-working man. Every day, from sunrise to sunset, Obioma worked tirelessly in his fields and at his small shop in the market. He grew crops and sold various goods to make a living. Through his hard work and determination, Obioma managed to save a considerable amount of money. One evening, as Obioma sat in his small cozy hut counting his savings, he felt a sense of pride. I've worked so hard for this, he thought to himself. But as he looked at the pile of coins and notes, a worry crept into his mind. What if someone steals my money? He wondered. The thought of losing his hard-earned fortune made his heart race. He remembered the times when he had nothing, the struggles and the hunger. He didn't want to go back to those days. Obioma decided that he needed to do something to keep his money safe. I have to hide my money where no one can find it, he said to himself. He thought about many places but wasn't satisfied with any of them. He needed a place where only he knew about. A place far from praying eyes. One moonlight night. Obioma made up his mind. He put all his money into a small study box. As he prepared to leave, his neighbor Neka saw him. Obioma, where are you going to this late at night? She asked curiously. Oh, Neka, I just need to take care of something important. Obioma replied, trying to sound casual. Neka raised an eyebrow but didn't press further. Be careful, she said. I will, thank you, Obioma said as he hurried away. Obioma walked briskly, carrying the box close to his chest. The night was quiet and the moon shone brightly, lighting his path. He made his way to Enigo City, which was a few miles away from his village. The journey was long, but Obioma was determined. He didn't want to risk hiding his money anywhere in Achina, where someone might stumble upon it. Finally, Obioma reached Enugu. He looked around for a secluded spot. After some searching, he found an old study tree in a quiet part of the city. This is perfect, he thought. He looked around to make sure no one was watching. Satisfied that he was alone, Obioma started digging a hole under the tree. As he dug, he spoke to himself. This is the best way to keep my money safe. No one will think to look for it here. He continued digging until the hole was deep enough. Carefully, he placed the boss inside the covered... Oh my god. Carefully, he placed the box inside and covered it with the soil he had dug up. He patted the ground firmly to make sure it looked undisturbed. There, Obioma said to himself with a sigh of relief, Now, my money is safe. He looked at the tree and memorized the spot. I will come back for you when I need you. He whispered to the buried box. Content that his treasure was now hidden away, Obioma began his journey back to Achina. As he walked back, he felt a sense of relief wash over him. He was happy that he had taken steps to protect his savings. Now, I don't have to worry about thieves, he thought. The journey back was peaceful. The moon guided him and the cool night breeze kept him company. When Obioma finally reached his village, it was nearly dawn. He quietly slipped into his hut, careful not to wake anyone. He lay down on his mat and smiled to himself. I did the right thing, he thought as he drifted off to sleep. The next day, Obioma went about his usual routine. He walked in his fields and tended to his shop. He felt a new sense of calm. Even though he missed seeing his money, he knew it was safe. When he felt anxious, 
he reminded himself of the sturdy old tree in Enugu and the hidden treasure beneath it. As days turned into weeks, Obioma continued to live his life with peace of mind. He still worked hard, saving more money, but now he did so without the constant fear of losing it. The thought of his hidden treasure gave him comfort and made his days a little brighter. Obioma's decision to bury his money under the tree in Enugu became a secret he kept close to his heart. It was his precautionary measure, his way of ensuring that all his hard work would not be in vain. And so, with a sense of security and relief, Obioma lived each day with a lighter heart and a hopeful spirit, knowing that his treasure was safely hidden away. As time passed, Obioma couldn't shake off the longing for the sight of his buried treasure. Every morning, as he walked in his fields, the thought of his hidden money would creep into his mind. I wonder if it is still there. He would think to himself. The desire to ensure it was safe and intact grew stronger within him each day. One evening, as Obioma sat outside his hut, his mother, Adeze, noticed his distracted expression. Obioma, you seem worried. What is on your mind? She asked gently. Obioma hesitated for a moment before replying. Mama, I just can't stop thinking about something important I left in the city. Adeze looked at him with concern. If it is troubling you this much, maybe you should go and check on it, she suggested. Unable to resist any longer, Obioma decided it was time to make the journey to Enugu. Early the next morning, he set out on the familiar path, his heart filled with a mix of anticipation and anxiety. He walked. He tried to reassure himself. I'm sure everything is fine. I was careful when I hid it. He muttered. The journey to Enugu was long, but Obioma was determined. He walked quickly, eager to reach the tree where his treasure was buried. Finally, as the sun was high in the sky, he arrived at the familiar spot. The old tree stood tall and sturdy, just as he remembered. With his heart pounding, Obioma knelt down and began to dig at the spot where he had concealed his wealth. He dug carefully, removing the soil bit by bit. It's here. It's here somewhere. I know it is here, he whispered to himself. But as he dug deeper, his hand only touched more soils. Panic began to set in. No, this can't be right, he said, digging faster. He widened the hole, his heart racing, sweat dripping down his forehead as he frantically searched for his treasure. To his dismay, the once buried treasure was nowhere to be found. Obioma sat back on his heels, staring at the empty hole in disbelief. No, this can't be happening, he cried out in despair. He looked around, hoping that maybe he had dug in the wrong spot. But the tree was unmistakable. This was the place. The shock of the discovery turned Obioma's joy into bitter disappointment. He couldn't understand how this had happened. Who could have taken it? How did they find it? He wondered aloud, his voice trembling with sorrow. The money that had brought him happiness now left him with emptiness and sorrow. Obioma felt a deep sadness that seemed to weigh him down. He sat under the tree, his head in his hands, trying to make sense of his loss. After a while, Obioma knew he couldn't stay there forever. With a heavy heart, he covered the hole and stood up. I have to go back home, he said to himself, though the walls felt hollow. As he walked back to Achina, his mind was filled with thoughts of his lost treasure. How will I explain this to Mama? What will I do now? He kept asking himself. The journey back seemed longer and harder, each step a reminder of what he had lost. When Obioma finally reached his village, it was late in the evening. He entered his hut quietly, not wanting to alarm his mother. He lay down on his mat 
staring at the ceiling, unable to sleep. The thought of his missing treasure haunted him. How could this happen? What did I do wrong? He kept asking himself over and over. The next morning, Adeze noticed her son's troubled expression. Obioma, my son, what is troubling you? She asked gently. Obioma forced a smile and said, Nothing, Mama. I'm just tired from the journey. Adeze knew something was wrong, but she didn't press further. She hoped that whatever was bothering her son, he would eventually share it with her. And so, with a heavy heart and a mind full of questions, Obioma continued his daily life in Achina. The loss of his treasure weighed on him, a constant reminder of what he had once had and now lost. Feeling ashamed and unsure whom to confide in, Obioma faced each day with a heavy heart. How could I be so foolish? He muttered to himself over and over again. The loss of his buried treasure weighed heavily on his mind. He couldn't shake off the feeling of regret and sorrow. Every morning, Obioma would wake up with the same heavy feeling in his chest. He would look at the rising sun and wonder, what will happen today? What will today bring? But no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't find any joy in his daily activities. The thought of his lost money was like a dark cloud hanging over him. One day, as Obioma was walking in his field, his friend Chima came by. Obioma, you haven't been yourself lately. What is bothering you? Chima asked, his voice full of concern. Obioma sighed and wiped his sweat from his brow. Oh, it's not in Chima. Just feeling a bit down, he replied, trying to sound casual. Chima wasn't convinced. Come on, Obioma, you can tell me. We've been friends for a long time, he said, placing a hand on Obioma's shoulder. Obioma looked at Chima, feeling a lump in his throat. He wanted to tell his friend the truth, but the shame was too much. I appreciate your concern, Chima. Maybe another time, Obioma said softly. Chima nodded, though he still looked worried. All right, but remember, I'm here if you need to talk, he said before walking away. As the days went by, Obioma continued to keep his secret. He went about his daily task, but his heart wasn't in it. He felt like a shadow of his former self. His mother, Adeze, noticed the change in him as well. Obioma, my son, you haven't been eating much. Are you feeling all right? Adeze asked one evening as they sat for dinner. Obioma forced a smile and said, I'm fine, Mama. Just not very hungry. Adeze frowned, but she didn't press further. She could see the sadness in her son's eyes and it broke her heart. If you ever want to talk, I'm here for you, my son, she said gently. Thank you, Mama, Obioma replied, his voice barely above a whisper. Obioma, still grappling with the weight of his lost fortune, continued his daily life in the village. Each day felt like a struggle and he couldn't see a way out of his sadness. One afternoon, as Obioma sat by the river, he watched the water flow gently by. He remembered happier times when he used to play by the river as a child, carefree and full of dreams. Will I ever feel that way again? He wondered. As he sat lost in thought, a young boy from the village named Ifani approached him. Hello, Obioma. What are you doing here? Ifani asked with curiosity. Just thinking, how are you, Ifani? Obioma replied, trying to muster his smile. I'm good. I found a shiny stone by the river. Look, Ifani said, holding up a small smooth stone that sparkled in the sunlight. That's a nice stone, Ifani. Obioma said, admiring it. Thank you. I think it's my lucky stone. Maybe it will bring you luck too. Ifani said, handing the stone to Obioma. Obioma took the stone and looked at it closely. Thank you, Ifani. Maybe it will. He said, feeling a small spark of hope in his heart. As Ifani ran off to play, Obioma held the stone tightly in his hand. Maybe this can get better. He thought, 
The simple gesture from the young boy gave him a glimmer of hope. Obioma knew he needed to find a way to move forward, even without his treasure. He needed to focus on the things he still had, his family, his friends and his work. He promised himself that he would try to find joy in the little things again. With that promise in his heart, Obioma stood up and walked back to his village. He knew it wouldn't be easy, but he was determined to find a new path to happiness. The memory of his lost treasure would always be with him, but he hoped that, with time, it would hurt less. One day, as Obioma walked through the bustling market square in Achina, he couldn't help but feel the weight of his lost treasure dragging him down. The market was alive with the sounds of vendors calling out their goods, children laughing and playing, and the smell of fresh bread and ripe fruits filling the air. But none of these could lift Obioma's spirits. He moved through the crowd like a shadow, his mind lost in worry. As he walked past a store selling colorful fabrics, a voice called out to him, Obioma, my friend, you look troubled. What weighs so heavily on your mind? The voice belonged to Uche, a wise man known throughout the village for his deep understanding and kind heart. Obioma paused and turned to see Uche's warm, consigned eyes. Oh, Uche, it's nothing. Obioma replied, trying to force a smile, but Uche was not convinced. Sometimes, sharing our bodies can lighten them. Uche said gently, come, sit with me for a while. He gestured a bench under the shade of a large mango tree. Feeling a bit hesitant but also comforted by Uche's presence, Obioma nodded and sat down beside him. Uche, I don't know if talking about it will help. But Obioma began, his voice heavy with sorrow. Friends are like mirrors, Obioma. They reflect our innermost feelings, Uche said. A problem shared is a problem half solved. Trust me, you will feel better if you talk about it. Obioma sighed deeply, feeling the weight of his troubles. All right, Uche. I will tell you, he said, finally deciding to confide in his newfound friend. As Obioma began to recount the tale of his buried treasure and its subsequent loss, Uche listened attentively. I worked so hard to save that money, Obioma said, his voice trembling. I thought hiding it under a tree in Enugu would keep it safe. But when I went back, it was gone. Uche's eyes widened with shock and empathy. That must have been very difficult for you, Obioma. He said softly, Did anyone see you when you buried the money? Was there anything unusual about the spot you chose? Obioma shook his head. Tears welling up in his eyes. No, Uche, I was very careful. I went at night and made sure no one was around. It was just an old tree in a quiet part of the city. He explained, his voice breaking with emotion. Uche stroked his chin. Uche stroked his chin thoughtfully, his mind racing with possibilities. Sometimes, even when we think we are alone, there can be eyes watching. But let us not jump into conclusions. Perhaps there is another explanation, he said, trying to calm Obioma. Do you remember leaving anything behind that might have attracted attention? Uche asked, delving deeper into the mystery. Obioma wiped a tear from his cheek and thought for a moment. No, I don't think so. I was very discreet. I don't have any enemies that I know of. He replied, his heart aching with the loss. Uche nodded, understanding the gravity of Obioma's situation. Obioma, let us take some time to meditate on this together. Sometimes, in this quiet moment, we find answers we did not expect. He suggested. Obioma felt a small sense of relief, knowing that he was not alone in his trouble. Thank you, Uche. I appreciate your help, he said, feeling a bit lighter. Uche smiled warmly. We will meet again in a few days. Until then, try to find peace in your heart, he advised. As Obioma left the market, he felt a glimmer of hope. 
Maybe, just maybe, Uche would be able to help him and find a solution. He went about his daily life, trying to keep his spirits up while waiting for the next meeting. During the days of meditation, Uche reflected on various possibilities, seeking a solution for Obioma's predicament. He considered different angles and thought deeply about the situation. When they met again, Uche approached Obioma with a gentle smile. Obioma, I have thought long and hard about your situation. While I do not have a clear answer, I believe that with patience and faith, something good will come on your way. The universe has a way of balancing things out, Uche said, his voice full of wisdom. Obioma nodded, appreciating Uche's genuine care. Thank you, Uche. Your words give me hope, he said, feeling a sense of calm. Concerned for Obina's well-being, Uche, the wise man, proposed taking some time to meditate on the situation. Obioma, let's take some time to think this through. Sometimes, answers come to us in silence. He suggested, Obioma, appreciative of the wise man's genuine care, agreed to wait patiently for his friend's return. Thank you, Uche. I will try to be patient, Obioma said, feeling a bit more hopeful. Uche nodded. I will meditate on this and see if I can find a solution. In the meantime, try to keep your heart at peace. With that, Uche left the market and headed to his quiet spot on the outskirts of the village. It was a simple place, surrounded by tall trees and booming flowers. Uche found comfort in nature, believing that the calmness of the surroundings helped clear his mind. Inside his hut, Uche lit a small candle and sat down on a mat. He closed his eyes and began to meditate. Dear God, help me find a way to ease Obioma's pain. He whispered. He focused on his breathing, letting his thoughts flow freely. During the days of meditation, Uche reflected on various possibilities seeking a solution for Obioma's predicament. He thought about different scenarios and tried to imagine how the treasure might have disappeared. Could it have been animals, or perhaps someone stumbled upon it by accident? He wondered. As Uche meditated, he also thought about the lessons that could be learned from Obioma's situation. Maybe this is a test of faith and patience. He mused. Perhaps there is a greater lesson here, one that Obioma needs to learn. One evening, as Uche sat by the river, he watched the water flow gently over the rocks. The sands of the river was soothing, and it helped him think more clearly. Water always finds its way around obstacles. He thought, maybe Obioma needs to find a new path, just like the river. Despite his deep reflection, Uche couldn't find a clear answer to the mystery of the lost treasure. He felt frustrated, but knew he had to be honest with Obioma. Sometimes, we must accept that we don't have all the answers, he reminded himself. When the days of meditation were over, Uche prepared to meet Obioma again. He walked back to the market square, his heart heavy with the knowledge that he hadn't found a solution. He hoped that his words would still offer some comfort to his friend. Obioma was waiting at the market, his eyes filled with hope and anxiety. Uche, have you found any answers? He asked eagerly as soon as he saw the wise man approaching. Obioma was waiting at the market, his eyes filled with hope and anxiety. Uche, have you found any answer? He asked eagerly as soon as he saw the wise man approaching. Uche took a deep breath and placed a comforting hand on Obioma's shoulder. Obioma, I have meditated long and hard on your situation. I regret to say that I haven't discovered a clear answer. He admitted he saw the disappointment in Obioma's eyes and quickly added, But I have not lost hope. Sometimes, the answers we seek come in unexpected ways. Obioma nodded, trying to hide his disappointment. I understand, Uche. Thank you for trying. Your efforts mean a lot to me. He said sincerely. Uche smiled gently. Obioma, I have said heartfelt prayers, hoping that someday, Someone deserving will compensate you for your lost treasure. 
the universe has a way of balancing things out. Keep your faith strong and don't lose hope. Obioma sighed but felt a bit of comfort in Uche's words. I will try, Uche. I will try to stay hopeful, he said, feeling a bit lighter. As they walked together through the market, Uche continued to encourage Obioma. Remember, Obioma, true wealth is not just in money. It is in the love of our family, the support of our friends, and the strength of our spirit. These are treasures that can never be taken away, he said wisely. Obioma listened and felt a small spark of hope reignite in his heart. You are right, Uche. I have many things to be thankful for. I will focus on those and keep moving forward, he said with a determined smile. With Uche's support and his own inner strength, Obioma continued his journey, hopeful that one day he would find a way to overcome his loss and find happiness again. The wise man's meditation had not provided a clear solution, but it had given Obioma the strength to keep going, and they believed that better days were ahead. One sunny afternoon, Obioma and Uche were walking through the village, deep in conversation about the mystery of the lost treasure. Obioma was expressing his ongoing worries and frustration. Uche, I still can't believe my money is gone. How could this happen? Obioma said, shaking his head. Uche nodded sympathetically. I know, Obioma. It is a heavy burden to carry. But remember, we must keep looking for answers and stay hopeful. He replied. As they walked, they were approached by a madman who lived on the outskirts of the village. His name was Namde, and he was known for his erratic behavior and strange talk. People often avoided him, thinking he had nothing valuable to offer. But Namde seemed curious about Obioma and Uchi's conversation. Why do you look so sad, Obioma? He asked, his eyes wide with curiosity. Obioma hesitated, unsure whether to engage with Namde. He looked at Uche, seeking his opinion. Uche, undeterred by societal norms, suggested they share their story with Namde. Sometimes, wisdom comes from the most unexpected places, Uche said gently. Obioma was still unsure, but Uche, can we really trust what he says? He whispered. Uche smiled and reminded Obioma, wisdom can come from anyone, Obioma. Let's give it a try. With the encouragement, Obioma decided to share his story. Namde, I saved a lot of money over the years and buried it under a tree in Enugu to keep it safe. But when I went back to check on it, it was gone. I don't know what happened or who took it. Obioma explained, his voice filled with sorrow. Namde listened intently, nodding his head as Obioma spoke. That is a sad story, Obioma. But sometimes we miss what is right in front of us, Namde said cryptically. Namdi scratched his head and thought for a moment. Sometimes, the answer is not in what we see, but in what we feel. He said mysteriously. Chidi, who had been listening quietly, spoke up. What kind of tree was it, Obioma? He asked innocently. Obioma looked down at Chidi and replied, It was a big tree, old tree with strong roots. I think it was a GBD tree. Chidi's eyes lit up with curiosity. My father says the root of the GBD tree is used for medicine. Maybe someone dug it up for the roots. He suggested. Obioma and Uche exchanged surprised glances. Namdi nodded, a smile spreading across his face. The boy is right. Sometimes wisdom comes from the most unexpected places. He echoed Uche's earlier words. Uche looked at Obioma with newfound hope. Maybe Chide has given us a clue. We should look into this, he said, feeling a spark of excitement. Obioma felt a wave of relief wash over him. Thank you, Chide. Your suggestion might help us find the answer, he said, patting the boy on the shoulder. Chide beamed with pride. I hope it helps, Obioma. Namdi still smiling added. Remember, answers come in many forms. Keep your heart and mind open. Obioma felt grateful for the unexpected wisdom from Namdi and the innocent insight from Chidi. He looked at Uche, feeling more hopeful than he had in a long time. Thank you, Uche, and thank you, Namdi and Chidi. 
I will follow this lead and see where it takes me. He said, his voice filled with determination. As they parted ways, Obioma felt a renewed sense of purpose with Uche's guidance and unexpected help from Namde and Chidi. He was ready to continue his search for answers. He realized that wisdom could indeed come from the most unexpected places. And sometimes, the simplest observations could lead to the greatest discoveries. With hope in his heart and a new lead to follow, Obioma set out to uncover the truth about his lost treasure, grateful for the unexpected alleys he had found along the way. After a brief moment of contemplation, Namdi the madman turned his back and continued on his way, leaving Obioma and Uche surprised and puzzled. They watched him walk away, his earlier words still echoing in their minds. Uche smiled at Chidi's simplicity and wisdom. Sometimes, children see things that we adults overlook. He said, patting Chidi on the head, Thank you for telling us, Chidi. This might be an important clue. Obioma felt a spark of hope reignite in his heart. Do you think someone might have dug up the roots for medicine and found my money? He said, his voice filled with anticipation. It is possible, Uche replied thoughtfully. We should follow this lead. The city's doctor might know something about it. Encouraged by this newfound direction, Obioma decided to seek advice from the city doctor. We should go to Enugu and talk to the doctors there. Maybe they can help us. He said, feeling a renewed sense of purpose. Uche nodded in agreement. Let's not waste any time. We will leave first thing in the morning, he said. The next day, Obioma and Uche set out for Enugu. The journey was filled with anticipation and hope. As they walked, they discussed their plan. When we get there, we will ask around for doctors who use Jubilee roads. Someone must know something, Uche suggested. Obioma nodded. Yes, and we should explain the situation clearly. Maybe they've heard of someone finding a buried box. He added, when they arrived in Enugu, they went straight to the marketplace where they knew they could find information. They approached a store where an elderly woman was selling herbs and medicinal plants. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you know any doctor who used the roots of Jubilee tree for medicine? Uche asked politely. The woman looked up and smiled. Ah, the Jubilee tree. Yes, many doctors use its roots. You should speak to Dr. Okoro. He is well known for his herbal remedies. She replied, pointing them in the right direction. Thanking the woman, Obioma and Uche made their way to Dr. Okoro's clinic. It was a small but busy place filled with people seeking treatment. They waited patiently until it was their turn to speak with the doctor. Dr. Okoro was a kind-looking man with a warm smile. How can I help you today? He asked as they entered his office. Obioma took a deep breath and explained his predicament. I buried a box of money under a GBD tree for safekeeping, but when I went back, it was gone. A little boy told me that the roots of the GBD tree are used for medicine. We were hoping you might know something about it. He said, his voice filled with hope. Dr. Koro listened carefully and then nodded. Yes, we do use Jubilee tree roots for certain treatments. It's possible that someone might have dug up the roots and found your box. He said thoughtfully. Uche leaned forward, eager for more information. Do you know of anyone who recently brought in Jubidi roots? Maybe they mentioned finding something unusual. He asked. Dr. Okoro thought for a moment. Then his eyes brightened. Yes, actually, a merchant named Mina came to me a few weeks ago. He brought in a large badge of Jubilee roots. He mentioned that while digging for the roots, he found something odd. He said, Uche's eyes lit up with hope. Can you tell me more about this merchant? Where can I find him? He asked eagerly. Dr. Koro smiled. Mina is an honest man and a well-known merchant in the city. He lives not far from here. Let me give you his address, he said, writing down the directions for Uche. Thank you, Dr. Koro. You have been very helpful, Uche said, expressing his gratitude. With the direction in his hand, 
Uche made his way to Mina's house. As he approached, he saw a well-kept home with a beautiful garden. He knocked on the door, feeling a mix of excitement and nervousness. A moment later, a middle-aged man opened the door. Good day, how can I help you? Mina asked politely. Greetings, Mina. My name is Uche. I have heard of your recovery and wish to share a story. Uche began. Mina invited Uche inside and they sat down in the living room. Thank you, Uche. What brings you here? Mina asked curiously. Expressing gratitude for Mina's recovered health, Uche explained Obioma's situation. A dear friend of mine, Obioma, saved a lot of money over the years and buried it under a GBD tree for safekeeping. When he went back to check on it, the money was gone. We believe someone might have found it while digging for the roots of the tree, he said. Mina listened attentively, his expression turning serious. I see. That must have been very hard for Obioma. He said sympathetically. Uche continued. Dr. Okoro mentioned that you brought in a badge of Jubilee roots recently and found something unusual. We were hoping you might have found Obioma's buried money. Mina nodded understanding the gravity of the situation yes i did find something strange while digging for the roots it was a small study box buried under the roots i brought it home and kept it safe hoping to find its owner he said uche's heart raced with excitement that must be obioma's box he would be so relieved to know that it is safe he explained mina smiled Glad to have found the rightful owner of the box. I am happy to return it. But first, I need to know the exact amount of gold inside to make sure it belongs to you or your friend. He said, Uche nodded in agreement. Of course, Obioma can tell you the exact amount. Let me bring him here. He said, with Mina's consent, Uche hurriedly made his way back to Obioma and shared the good news. Obioma I found the person who have your box. It is safe with merchants named Mina. We need to go to his house and you must tell him the exact amount of gold inside to claim it. He said excitedly. Obioma could hardly believe his ears. Really, Uche, my money is safe. Let's go right away. He said, feeling a surge of hope and relief. Together, they hurried to Mina's house. Mina welcomed them warmly and brought out the box. Obioma's eyes filled with tears of joy as he saw it. This is it, the box I buried, he said, his voice trembling with emotion. Mina smiled and asked, how much gold is inside? Obioma took a deep breath and replied, there are 50 gold coins inside. Mina opened the box and counted the coins. Satisfied with the answer, he handed the box to Obioma. It is all here. I'm glad I could help, he said. Obioma's heart swelled with gratitude. Thank you, Mina. You have no idea what this means to me, he said, shaking Mina's hand. Uche smiled, feeling proud of their successful journey. Obioma, your patience and faith have been rewarded. Let this be a lesson that hope and perseverance can lead to unexpected solutions, he said. With the help of a wise friend, a honest merchant, and the unexpected wisdom of a child, Obioma's lost treasure was finally restored. Obioma's heart rejoiced as his long-lost wealth was finally restored. He could hardly believe his eyes as he held the small study box in his hands. The gold coins inside glistened as if they had never been buried at all. Tears of joy welled up in his eyes and he looked at Mina with immense gratitude. Thank you, Mina. You have no idea what this means to me. Obioma said, his voice trembling with emotion. I thought I had lost everything. Mina smiled warmly. I'm glad I could help Obioma. It was the right thing to do. I hope this treasure brings you much happiness and peace. He replied. Uche, standing beside Obioma, placed a comforting hand on his shoulder. This journey has taught us a lot of lessons, my friend. It has shown us that sometimes... The solutions we seek come from the most unexpected places. He said wisely. Obioma nodded, wiping away his tears. You are right, Uche. I never imagined that a madman's peculiar insight 
a wise boy's simple suggestion and the persistence of a compassionate friend would lead me back to my treasure. He said, reflecting on the incredible journey they had been through. As they left Mina's house, Obioma felt a renewed sense of hope and gratitude. He looked at Uche and said, Thank you for standing by me, Uche. I couldn't have done this without you. Uche smiled and shook his head. You are a strong and determined person, Obioma. You would have found a way, but I'm glad I could help. Remember, true wealth isn't just about money. It's also about the love and support we have from our friends and family. He said, Obioma nodded thoughtfully. Yes, you are right. This experience has taught me the value of humility, openness, and seeking solutions from diverse sources. I am grateful for everything I have learned, he said. As they walked back to their village, Obioma felt lighter than he had in a long time. He thought about the madman, Namde, whose strange words had sparked a new line of thinking. He thought about Little Chidi, whose innocent question had led to the city doctors. And he thought about Uche, whose unwavering support had guided him through his darkest days. When they arrived back in Achina, Obioma's mother, Adeze, was waiting for them. She saw the box in Obioma's hand, and her eyes widened with surprise. Obioma, is that... she began. Yes, Mama, it is. I found my treasure, Obioma said. His voice filled with joy. He hugged his mother tightly feeling the warmth of her love and support. Adesa smiled, tears of happiness in her eyes. I am so happy for you, my son. I know you would find a way, he said. Obioma gathered the villagers and shared his story with them. He told them about the madman, the wise boy, and his friend Uche. He spoke about the lessons he had learned and the importance of seeking help from others. This experience has shown me that wisdom can be found in the most unexpected places. We must remain humble and open, and always be willing to seek solutions from diverse sources. Obioma said, addressing the villagers, I am grateful for the support of my friends and family, and I hope this story reminds us all of the interconnectedness of our journeys. The villagers listened intently, inspired by Obioma's tale, they cheered and celebrated his return, their hearts filled with joy and hope. As the sun set over Achina, Obioma sat with Uche and reflected on their journey. This has been an incredible experience, Uche. I have learned so much about myself and the world around me. He said, Uche nodded. Yes, Obioma, it is the reminder that sometimes the answers we seek are closer than we think. We just need to keep our hearts and minds open. Obioma smiled, feeling a deep sense of peace. Thank you, Uche. Thank you so much for everything, he said. And so, with the help of a madman's peculiar insight, the wise boy's simple suggestion, and the persistence of a compassionate friend, Obioma's tale of loss transformed into a story of unexpected redemption. It was a reminder to all that wisdom can be found in the most unlikely places, and that true wealth lies not just in material possessions, but in the love and support of those around us. The story of Obioma's lost and found treasure teaches us that wisdom can be found in unexpected places, emphasizing the importance of humility, openness, and seeking solutions from diverse sources. And with this newfound understanding, Obioma lived his life with a heart full of gratitude and spirit ready to embrace whatever the future held. And with that, my dear friends, our story comes to a close. But remember the magic of storytelling lives on, waiting to whisk us away on new adventures. We are the wonders of imagination, know no bounds. Goodbye for now, and may your dreams be filled with joy, wonder, and endless possibility. Thank you so much for watching. Please kindly like, share, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting stories.